Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I thought today I would just quickly jump onto the camera um, and do a basic construction of the 6x8 art journal. So I'm going to, to, to turn mine into a traveller's notebook with the 2 inch spine. So I'll turn over to my overhead camera. I will show you the um, 6x8 journal kit which is available on my website now and then I'll do a very basic quick construction for the traveller's notebook style um, or as quick and basic as it possibly can be <laughs> for a journal kit. <laughs> So this is the new 6x8 journal set. This one's different because it has the two spines that can be used in two different ways. As you can see, there are holes in the spines for three-hole pamphlet stitch, but there's also holes for um, that can be used for the elastics for the traveller's notebook. So this one's a two-inch spine. And this one is an inch and a half inch spine. So you get both of the spines in the set. So you can choose which one you want to do. I'm going to do the two inch thick spine today. You also get a little bit of a label plate that you can use for sticking on the front if you want to decorate it. You can um, paint it gold or brass or add gilding flake or waxes, or you could add decoupage papers, rice papers, napkins, that kind of stuff, if you want to decorate it that way. Or just paint it. It's entirely up to you. Um, you can just stick a, a piece of paper on the back if you want to put a name or something on it. Or you could just use that as a bit of a template if you wanted to, or actually add it onto there if you wanted. Anyway, it's included in the kit, whether you want to use it or not. So the covers um, have rounded corners on one side and square on the other. So the square ones are where the spine is going to go. So you've got a little bit of a rounded corner on both sides. So I'm going to use, as I said, the two inch spine today. Um, I'm going to put fabric on mine. And I've already added some double sided sticky tape. Um, and I'm going to just lay that down onto the mat. Just to make things a bit easier for me. So I've picked a pattern <laughs> that's got a line down it. So I can pretty much get it halfway. And I've um, cut it to the right height. So I'm literally just going to drop that down onto it. Now I've got my spacer, but I'm not going to use all the way. I'm just going to do it a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. Mainly because I don't want it to get stuck because it is very strong, the adhesive. And then I can just line that up with the bottom of the fabric because I know it's the right length anyway. And then I can just very carefully just lift the spacers out. If I'd gone all the way in, I'd have to try and prise them out that way. And then I can just flip it around just to add them again there. Like I said, they are only little... Um, I'm only using the end because I don't need the full extent of it. So the spacers are, if you haven't seen those before, these again are available on the website. So this is um, six millimetres or a quarter of an inch, and that's half an inch or 12 millimetres. So you can do two kind of thicknesses if you wanted to on the width of your spines. But that should give me now a nice fabric spine. Now all I have to do is just make sure that um, I put some um, either tissue paper or um, I'm going to use masking tape just on the inside. So that will do. Uh, I should really have got myself a little bone folder. And I'm just going to lightly put that there. And then I'll just use the handle of this. No, I will get a bone folder. <laughs> Not like I have to go far. It's only like two or three feet. 
and then I'm just going to gently work that in. And then I can just fold it. And that then will just give you that little bit of play. There we go. It just stops the adhesive on that side for no other reason at all. And then I can just very gently just run a craft knife, just along there. Not worrying too much at the moment about the holes. So that gives us plenty of play on there and just do the same thing again on that side. The masking tape is so thin but it will just provide that barrier. I'll just lay that down there. Not even put in any pressure on it and then just with the bone folder just run through edge to edge and then just gently fold it. Can always be tidied up in a little while. There we go for that. That's just the basic construction for the two covers. So I'll just go grab some elastic and then I'll be right back. Okay. So it's fine. All I need to do now is just to add a hole for my elastic through the fabric. Like I said, I'm only going to do one elastic today, but as you will see, it's going to be easy enough to add the other two elastics as and when I want to. So like I said, I'm just making a hole with the awl, just so I can see where I'm going. Now I've cut my piece of elastic at two and a half the lengths of the, um, the height of the journal. And I'm just going to just melt that down a little bit. So this is gonna be, I should really have used two mil elastic. Um, this is three mil. I thought we had some um, some three mil, but we don't. So, hello, Mr. Nippy. So I'm going to try and just feed that through. The holes are drilled specifically for this size. You can see that it does actually come through. Um, a pair of tweezers or something like that, just to help pull it through, or just use your point of your awl just to help push it through the holes. If you just use a smaller thickness of elastic, 
you'd be fine. So we're going out and then coming back in again. So I'm just going to melt that just so to stop it from fraying. And that should, so we'll just melt it again and try and see if I can squeeze it into a point. It is going to be hot, so just be careful. There we go. And I just need to encourage that through. Hello, Mr. Darling, Mr. Nippy News. <laughs> Mr. Nips has come through to say hello. I think he wants to have a play. So I might just have to have a quick pause. Once I've got this through, yeah, I definitely should use th th uh, thinner elastic. It is actually catching on the fabric at that side. <laughs> it's pawing me. I think he wants to go out. Right, so what I'll do is I'll just go and let him out for a wee wee. And then I will come back. Hopefully, once out there we go. That's it now. That's gone through now. I've got it. Yes, I'll be with you in a second, darling. <laughs> it's getting a bit insistent. Right, as you can see, it is through. I just have to pull it. It's just got caught a little bit on the adhesive for that fabric, so. There we are. <laughs> right. I'll just go and play with Mr. Nip. I'll let him out for a wee wee and then I'll be right back. Right, I'm back. He didn't want a wee wee. He just wanted feeding. Right. So what I've done is I've just pulled those two into the middle. I'm going to just pull slightly just to give a little bit of tension on the elastic. And then I'm just going to tie it into a knot. Put a bit of tension and then pull it. And there you go. So what you can do now is if you want to just trim that off. And then just melt it to stop it from fraying and it's back. Don't have Mr. Bentley today. He's gone to work with, with Ian. So it's just me and Mr. Nip. So all you see from that side, now look, is the elastic coming just over the end. But then you've got the full height of the elastic at that side to slide your signatures in. like so and literally you've got the journal ready to sit or ready to work and you can add your other signatures whenever you're ready for them like I said I probably will get some two mil and replace the elastics at a later, t at a later date but ow that hurt my ears and um, but for the time being what we need that's fine as it is. So what I can do now is I can finish off decorating the front cover of the journal by either painting using texture paste or adding uh, papers to it uh, and do the same thing literally for the spine. So I can slot cover and do whatever I want to. I mean, you could decorate the inside beforehand. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to actually put the journal together. Um, in one quick video so that's literally all you have to do okay so i've removed the elastic just for the time being just move my mat up a little bit that's better um 
and I've cut out a sheet of vintage um, newspaper. Um, this is from, I think about 18, have a look, 1888 again, July the 14th, 1888. <laughs> and I've double-sided it, so I've put that double-sided adhesive on it. So what I'm going to try and do is peel the back off and then I can just line up sort of the centre. I'm hoping that I've actually got this level. I'm trying to do it so I don't want to put a lot of pressure down on it. Okay, so grab that bone folder again because I need just to lift it a little bit. Just pull it back slightly. There we go. And then I'm going to just feed it into that groove before it sticks down. And then before that one gets too stuck, we again do the same thing at that side. Because if you're using glue, this would be a lot easier. You wouldn't have to faff like I am <laughs> with the tape. Push it down, push it into the groove. There we go. And then once it's down, you can just smooth it out as best you can. And then just pull that up a little bit because that's got a little bit creased. That's fine. Flip it over and then just run my bone folder and it looks like I've cut it just a little bit too short. Of course I didn't take into consideration the bits that have gone in there have I? Because I'm a numpty. But that's okay, we can disguise that later. I'll just give that there we go and then all I have to do is just to go back where those holes were and then just reintroduce them again so we can put the elastic back in. So what I might do on this side is I might actually cover that by adding a pocket on the inside. And then all I have to do is just to put the elastics back through the hole again. So I'm just going to reheat them. and just feed them back in the way that I did the last time. Yeah, so I'm just choosing which is going to be the up and which is going to be the down. It doesn't really make any difference. So I'll feed these back through and then I'll join with you again when I've got the elastics in. I did, found, I did find some thinner elastic, but I think that might be a bit too thin. So I may need to order some new elastic in the next week or so. Just, that's fallen out. Um, just um, so it's easier. 
to get it through. The, the holes are wide enough when they were cut, but because we've added the papers and the fabric, this thickness of elastic probably is just a little bit too thick for it. There we go. Just give it a bit of hand going through. There we go. Okay, actually back in a moment. Okay, so just to finish off those inside covers, I've cut some um, some basil cardstock and I've added, this is texture, it's got like a linen feel to it, which is a nice kind of cream colour. Um, I've cut it so it's just the same height as the journal. And I've done it at three inches and I'm going to put pockets on both sides just to kind of even it out. But what I've done is I've just marked on the inside and I'm just going to punch out a couple of just thumb notches, just because. Just because I think it looks nice. And then that will conclude kind of like the decoration or the basic decoration of the inside of the journal. Um, and then at my leisure, I can decide how I'm going to, or what I'm going to add onto the front. There we go. And of course I can go around and distress with distressing or whatever and grunge it up to suit my taste and my mood. <laughs> at a later day, or I could end up just putting a load of stickers on the inside. Make sure I get that lined up properly. That's it. There we go, so I've now got pockets where I can slide things underneath. I can also, like I said, I can put stickers and that kind of stuff on there. So I just have to work out how I'm going to decorate the inside of that. So like I said, that is pretty much the, the basic for the travellers. Um, I've already kind of found where the other holes are and ready to add the other two elastics. Like I said, I did take the elastic off to redo or to cover the inside of the journal. So again, I can just um, trim those and knit them off. I haven't got the knot in the middle, so I can play around with that as well. There you go. Like I said, the basic construction for the six by eight journal, um, just to get going ready for the mission inspirations. So I hope you enjoyed watching me put that together. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then please do so because you'll miss out on all the Mission Inspiration projects coming up over the next few weeks and months. So that's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I do like that paper. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.